Both of them are, uh, they're really locked in. They're eager. Uh, they're trying really hard to do everything I'm asking them to do, which I appreciate. And uh, the big thing right now for us at that position is those guys playing, on, uh, you know, playing fast as far as their tempo. And then, uh, and as they can, can operate fast, it'll help our team operate faster and then their feet. Really focusing on being on time with their throws, and that has a lot to do with their feet. Um, you know, I feel like they're smart kids. Uh, with what we've got in, they kind of know where they should be going with the ball. But when things are going fast and Things get sped up. Can they play fast but slow everything down mentally? And then, like I said, footwork and throwing on time, that'll be key for both of them uh, as we move forward. So with Kyle, you know, he's been in a similar system at Shiloh. Do you, yeah. you, you feel like he's kind of – he can grasp things a little bit quicker than maybe the usual guy coming in this system? You know, both of them have been in a similar system because, you know, at Phoenix City, Jonathan did a lot of the same type of stuff too. But, you know, Kyle did have a year here as a true freshman in what we do. So there's probably a little more recall that – things that maybe come back to him uh, a little quicker. But, you know, Jonathan is such a, a quick study, a hard worker, and, and both of those guys have been great in meetings. They've been taking, uh, you know, books home, doing extra work. I mean, they've come prepared every day. I, didn't, I don't feel like either one of these first two days they've shown up not ready to go. And so that's just a matter of getting the repetition because a lot of what we do has to do with repetition and time. And same thing with the wideouts. You know, as the wideouts and them get on the same page, they'll, they'll continue to look better and better and better. Have any of the wideouts caught your, caught your eye? Yeah, you know, I think we got a chance. Um, we've got some talent there. It's just a matter of getting them, just like everybody else, it's across the board on offense right now, getting them to understand the tempo, which we want to play at, so we practice that, at that tempo, and, and the expectations and the standards of, you know, how fast we want to go with everything. And, uh, you know, they'll get in better shape, too, for what we do as we go. Um, you know, you definitely look at a guy like uh, uh, Ricardo Lewis. He's got uh, loads of talent. Um, and uh, he just needs the reps. Uh, you got from Sammy to, uh, to Jalen Denson, those guys. You got the older guys like Quan Bray and Trevon Reed. Or, you know, you can tell they've got some recall uh, of what we're doing. And, uh, and, you know, Melvin Ray's done some good things too. But the thing is, as we go through practice, at the tempo we go with only six or seven guys, they've got to be able to fight through that and be just as good at the end of practice as they were at the beginning. Uh, but we, we've got a chance there. Yeah. How do they handle the, the down numbers, obviously? Six receivers in spring. It's you know, we haven't said anything to them. They had not said a word about it. I think it's great. Um, you know, we're going to be smart with everybody. But uh, that's the, they get, we got a true too deep. Those guys are getting plenty of reps. Um, and so that's what it's for. We're not going to run them into the ground. Uh, we won't be smart with them. But at the same time, they need the reps. And it's going to help them because at wide out and what we do, they need to run right now. It's, it's kind of like uh, they're going to get broken into the shape for what we do. And right now it's tough. It is every time we've ever done it. Uh, but their attitude's great. We just got to get them now. You know, we're, we're harping on them to play faster and do the tempo, and that's great. And we're going to keep doing that. And it's very chaotic out there. But at the same time, we can't just play fast. We got to play smart. You know, I thought today maybe we were not anywhere near our standard and what we want. We were trying to play faster, but then we were losing some of the where do we line up? You know, what do we do on this play? And, and so we, we just kind of let that get away from us. We got to be able to play fast and play smart. On Wednesday, we saw uh, Kyle was working with. Corey Grant in the backfield, a lot of the first unit, a lot of returning yeah. starters, and then today uh, saw a little bit more job the Wallace doing that, at least in the portion where we're there for. How much kind of rotation is I'll be that? dead honest with you, it's at random. I mean, we, we're, we're rotating those guys, even Wednesday and today, I'm rotating Jonathan Kyle based off maybe seven on seven, we do it this way, team, we do it this way. And, and Coach Horton's doing the same thing with Corey and Trey and Cameron Artis Payne. So, it, how it shook out and appeared, maybe, but right now we don't really even have a first group. Um, I think at wideout, Coach Craig did the same thing today. The guys who went with, quote, the first group on Wednesday, we flipped it today. And, um, you know, there is a core group of guys that are going to rep together more so than others, maybe, but um, it probably just so happened that way. Conditioning wise, before uh, the start of practice, yeah. uh, we were speaking to Coach Monson the other day about weight and, and strength and things like that. Uh, Jonathan gains 12 pounds, and uh, he was saying that Kyle gained eight, but was really coming down from a higher yeah. number. Where do you want them to be size-wise? You know, when I got it here, I, and even right now, I think Kyle just – he put on a lot of weight. I think Kyle's a little heavy. He probably still is. And uh, he's lost some since we got here and through the, the winter conditioning. I'd like him to get back to where he was as a freshman. Uh, I think he was around 220, 225 maybe. 
Uh, he was a little heavier than that when we got here. You know, as a freshman, he played and ran the ball very well. Uh, you can see right now he's got the arm talent. We just got to get him consistent. Uh, I think the ball's coming out of his hand pretty well at times. Uh, Jonathan has gotten bigger, which is good. Um, you know, we'll kind of manage that target weight as we go, but I do agree it's good that Jonathan's put on some weight. And Kyle, we'd like to get him down a little bit so he can, you know, he just feels better. He's already said now that he's lost some weight, he just feels better. And I think we can get a little more off him. He'll, he'll feel better and move better. Brett, can you talk about what you'd like to see tomorrow, first day in pads? Well, I'd like to see our pace and tempo improve again. You know, our guys have now had two days to understand. It's, it's chaotic. We ask a lot of it, and there's a reason for it. I'd like to see us continue to make strides in that. Um, I'd like to get really quickly to where our coaches aren't having to coach the pace and the tempo as much. We can coach more the fundamentals and the X's and O's things. So that's number one. Number two, first day in pads, I want our guys to be physical. Um, you know, we got to be physical across the board, the wideouts. With their blocking on the perimeter, I like the backs to be physical and protect the football. Now that they're going to be getting hit up front, we'd like to see who can be physical. And I'd like to see how quarterbacks are when pads are popping around them, how they react, even if they're not live, how they're reacting to all that. And then overall, every day, uh, and it goes a little bit with our tempo and pace, but the discipline. Every day we are preaching the discipline of where we want to line up, how we want to run a route, how we want to take a step at line, quarterbacks exactly where they need to go with the football. Uh, we got to be extremely disciplined in every position in order for us to be successful. So those will probably be the main three things I'd like for tomorrow. See how that bounce back. You know, one day we practice today, don't have an off day, and I, I would think they'll be excited in the stadium with pads on, I would hope. We saw it last year at Arkansas State just trimming down mistakes and interceptions and stuff. Mm -hmm. What kind of goes into that in the spring? How do you try to get that going, get that in guys' mind about being very good? It's a process, and, you know, it didn't happen overnight at Arkansas State. Um, you know, we're going to emphasize it every day. From a quarterback standpoint, obviously, we're throwing the football. We touch it every play. But at every position, we start every day uh, with ball security <coughs> drills and things like that at those skill spots. Uh, we'll emphasize <coughs> it every day. Um, and when we have issues with it, we'll deal with it then. We'll, we'll coach it up. And it, it's just, I think you get what you emphasize. And if you just emphasize it for a little bit and then you forget about it, then it's not going to work. we got to be consistent as coaches and demand it from our players. And I think they'll, over time, learn how to play smart and aggressive and confident, but, but not careless, without, if that helps. With Ontario, maybe there's not a lot of talk about who's going to kind of fill that speed burner mm -hmm. role in the offense. So. What, what does Florian Burton Grant bring to the table as far as that role goes with the speed of the offense? He's definitely a guy we'll, we'll take a look at it that. You know, I think that's part of what the spring's for is, you know, one, trying to get our guys disciplined and get the mindset of how we want to play, but next is evaluating who will be good doing what. And uh, hopefully towards the middle of spring, now once we're about to get pads on, and definitely by the end of spring, we'll have a feel for who fits where and what everybody can do best. And then we can kind of start plugging them where we think they're going to help us the most. But, you know, Corey, a guy, I remember him coming out of high school, could run. I think he won state in 100 or something like that. I mean, straight line, he can really run. we got some other candidates, too. We'll give it a shot. And, see what happens, but yeah, he's definitely one of those guys that can fill that role. Robinson Threes, he might be one of those guys who was saying he, he considers himself to be a part-time offensive player. Yeah. Is that basically your assessment? You see that he could, he, he at one point last season was working out with the running backs. Mm -hmm. Do you see him basically being that kind of weapon also? Yeah, you know, I remember when we recruited him, I know he can do special things with the ball in his hands. Right now he's 100% defense, but anytime we can get a guy who can run with the ball in his hands, that'd be fine. So if, if we get that opportunity, he, he would be a guy who could fit that role, but Hopefully, obviously, he steps up and helps us on defense. Where is the evaluation with receivers as to Sammy's obviously looked at as a deep threat, and, and Quan and Trevon are, are certainly mm -hmm. slot guys, CJ and the H backs. But yeah. is there someone who you're looking at right now who's going to line up opposite Sammy on the outside and, and, and serve in that role? We're still filling that out. And I mean, even then, you know, Sammy doesn't have a job either. I mean, they're all open. But, uh, you know, Sammy is a guy who made some plays down the field last year. I've been really impressed with the way Ricardo Lewis can stretch the field right now. I mean, he, he looks really fast out there. Now, who knows once we get pads on uh, what he can do. Um, and we'll work it out. I feel good about those guys. If they'll keep coming and they'll buy into everything Coach Craig's asking them to do and, and just buy into how we want to practice the tempo. And usually it happens around a couple practices in. They start to get used to the demands that we're putting on them out there because it's a lot, of, a lot of running at that receiver spot. And, but I feel good about Sammy, yeah, and, and uh, Ricardo as guys that maybe can stretch the field. Uh, Jalen and Melvin are big-bodied guys that you really feel like can help you. Um, and a lot of the things we do, and like you said, I think Quan's got a chance to really be electric in that slot. With the line with four returning starters uh, working together mm -hmm. thus far, 
uh, and then you have Jordan Diamond come in and serve in that left guard spot. How much rotation are you having that we are seeing and not seeing in that left guard spot, particularly with Jordan? Yeah. We'll know a lot more here starting tomorrow and Monday and Wednesday, a couple days in the pads with the line. You know, we've kind of put him in a spot and just kept him there for continuity and repetition right now. Um, but just off what maybe our first thoughts would be, but we really don't know until we get out there and get some pads on. I think tomorrow you get some inside drill, you get some live work, same thing on Monday, same thing on Wednesday. Then we'll have to feel, okay, maybe this guy's in the right spot. Maybe we need to tweak it a little bit. Um, you know, we obviously want to get guys in the right spot as quick as possible so they can get the reps of where they're going to be. But right now it's been good to keep them in one spot, mainly for rep purposes. Obviously way too early with off this line without the pads, mm -hmm. but what were those first thoughts with Jordan Diamond? What, what was the thinking, I guess, that kind of put you in that group? You know, the thing about him is he's got an unbelievable work ethic. I mean, he cares. I mean, he's a guy that he's got great size. Um, he moves pretty well. But where maybe he's going to be lacking in some talent areas, he, he, he studies, he works so hard at everything. I remember Coach Grimes telling me that yesterday, that he just loves his attitude. That gives him a chance to even, you know, maybe some of the areas he's not as strong in improve and be okay there and not be a weakness for him. But he's a big guy, and so we're, uh, we're really excited to see him pass him all. I've got a lot, of, a lot of expectations to see how he does. What have you seen out of yourself and the rest of the coaches as far as working together uh, on the field this spring, this first two days? I think it's good. I think, honestly, it's a work in progress for us. You know, myself and, and Coach Grimes have done our system and practiced it, so we know what to expect. Uh, Coach Fountain's been around. He has an idea, but until you really get out and do it. But, you know, Coach Craig, Coach Horton, they're big time professionals. I mean, they've bought into everything we're doing. We work great together as a staff. We got no issues there. Um, we're all on the same page, all moving in the same direction. and. You know, that's just Coach Craig, Coach Horton, they understand what we want now. They're coaching exactly how we want it. And the five of us, I think, uh, I think we're doing well together. And I'm excited to have all four of those guys in my room with me.